Yes, yes, y'all. It's time for the dailybreadproject.com, your daily dose of goodness coming to you live on Facebook. And uh, the recordings are available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Just look up the dailybreadproject.com. I have a guest joining me in just a second. We're going to bring this thing to live on Facebook and we're going to rock and roll with it. Yes, yes. Can't wait to dive in with you guys today. Feeling good, feeling stoked, feeling ready to bring you that positivity that you need. Let's get, uh, let's get this stuff rocking and rolling so we can jump in and hopefully our guest joins us. If not, I'll roll solo. I ain't, I ain't afraid. <laughs> I ain't scared, as they say. Uh, we can do that, but I'm going to go ahead and bring it live to Facebook while I uh, give our guest just a moment to show up. And I'm going to shoot him a quick text just in case he's sleeping. <laughs> Let's do that real quick. There he is. All right, great. So my man is here. I am going to allow him to come in as a panelist, and I'm going to bring this thing live to our Facebook page. You are listening to the Daily Bread Project.com. And in just a moment, I'll bring you my guest and we'll rock into some positivity that I have, that we have uh, for you today. Looks like Zoom is going to behave today. Isn't that wonderful? They've got a billion users now. I just made up that number. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it looks like today we are winning. Uh, Let us see if this thing will go live and uh, I'm gonna bring in our guest here. Oh, it looks like he dropped. So let's bring that. Oh, panelists. No camera? Camera. Oh, well, you got to turn your camera on, Corey. There you go. All right, looks like we're live on Facebook. How about that? All right, so here we go. You are listening to thedailybreadproject.com. This is where we talk about power, positivity, leadership, love, and all that is good in the world. Out there, the media is beating you down, keeping you scared and afraid. Here, we're building you up, making you braver, and giving you the nourishment you need to bring the light daily. Can't do it by myself. Have to enlist friends, family, anybody that's willing to help on this journey to bring the light. And today I have Mr. Corey Carlson. What is up, my man? Hello, thank you very much for having me on. It's awesome, yes, I love yes, what sir. you're doing with this. Well, thank you, sir, I appreciate that. I didn't even know if you were on Facebook or not. I didn't even know if you knew what was going on, but I'm glad to hear that uh, you do know what's going on. And I'm glad you're here, brother. And so Corey is part of the Podcast Factory family. He's got the Win at Home First podcast, which is either out or about to come out very soon. He's got the book that goes along with that. And he is daily powering up men to have better lives at home and at work. So I couldn't think of a more perfect guest to have with us today. Thank you, Corey. First things first, man. Yes. We're going to talk about power. And I want to know what is your source of power? My source of power is it's God and it's, you know, it's my faith, but I'll tell you during this time, it's, it's been definitely doubling down on that. I mean, I think that's probably a true statement for a lot of leaders that, you know, I spend time with where before coronavirus, we were busy. We're kind of running around doing some quiet time here and there, maybe journaling, maybe praying some days, but now due to, pretty much the emotional roller coaster we've all been on, I find myself spending more time in quiet time, more time in reflection and both uh, the, the good and bad of, of you know, reflecting in prayer. It's, it's been pretty powerful. So my power for sure has been, you know, spending time with God this season. Tell me about that. You said both the good and bad, the quiet time brings good and bad. What do you mean by that? I think a lot like David in the Psalms, some of my quiet times will start off pretty frustrated and almost like a, 
what's going on, God? You know, I thought we were growing a business here. I thought those things were happening pretty powerfully. And then all of a sudden it's, and then it'll come back around full circle to the point of gratitude and, and grateful for what I do have. You know, similar you to a lot it. of different business owners, you know, Q, I mean, my Q1 was very, very strong for the my coaching practice and speaking engagements, book sales. And then when, you know, coronavirus hit, it, it, it went significantly down because there's no more conferences to speak at companies were stopping their, you know, keynote, and workshops from coming to them. So really for that month of March and, and April, that revenue was, was now gone. And, and so doing what I can to pivot, but that's part of the, that emotional roller coaster. Yeah, you know, I, I find that interesting and maybe you can share how you make that shift because I, I noticed this the other day, I was in some quiet meditation, which started out positive, then one little negative thought latched on and then I went down this tunnel and I, I said, wait a second, this is not right. It's not what I'm here for. And I pull myself back out of it. So how do you, is it a conscious effort? How do you pull yourself out of that spiral that's pulling you down? Right. Yeah, for me, it's, it, it is a lot of times journaling and I'll find myself, I have those negative thoughts because they, they enter all of us. I'll write them down and try to, and then, what is the truth in that, in that thought? I mean, you know, God is not abandoning me. God is not forgetting about me, even though those are the lies that I'm saying. And so a lot of times I'll, I'll, I'll try to capture that thought and write it down, whether it's in my journal, I have a whiteboard that every once in a while can become <laughs> the, uh, the victim of my journaling as I'm writing down all kinds of different things. But that's what I'll do is I'll try to capture that thought. And then from there, defeat it with either verses or just whatever the truth is. And that is helpful. It doesn't necessarily happen right away. It may take a couple of days to kind of get through through that piece, but it, it definitely has worked for me. I like it. So let's, uh, let's move on to positivity. And with uh, everything that's going on with the media, uh, talking trash with your neighbors, maybe not uh, not in the right frame of mind with everybody around you seemingly going into a negative spiral. How do you stay positive? I, try, I, I stay positive with, you know, talking with friends and, and my family about really what we're grateful for. It's being able to afford and, and, and get the opportunity to have a DoorDash deliver food for us like this weekend and, and talking about how, how, how fun that is and, and the neat experience and trying to really focus on some of the neat things that we've got to do over this last month as opposed to what we missed. And this particular weekend that we just had was actually a big weekend of things we were going to miss because my daughter was supposed to have a gymnastics meet. My other daughter was supposed to have a dance um, competition, and then my son was supposed to have a couple soccer games. So we, we spent a lot of time this week in talking about the, the good that we're experiencing as opposed to just sitting there and sulking in, oh, we don't get to do dance or gymnastics or soccer. And so it, it was a conscious effort and because we're all kind of feeling that in our, in our house because I also coach my son's soccer team, and I love it, and, and I love seeing my girls compete as well so there if we're not careful we can definitely focus on what we're missing throughout this whole experience and just trying to make a conscious effort of i mean this is a once in a lifetime opportunity we get to do some neat things that we never would have what are some some things that you used uh to get the kids to focus on the positive versus what they were missing out on yeah, some of it is, you know, is, is talking about, and I'm sure being a kid of an executive coach can be super annoying. <laughs> and because I, I, the things I talk with clients, I will a lot of times talk with them. And in Isaiah, where God says he's doing a new thing, that's actually what we talked about here in the last week with our kids of what are new things that are happening? What are the new things you're seeing, new perspectives, new mindset shifts, new hobbies? 
My middle daughter's taught herself to play the ukulele. My two younger kids, you remember Bob Ross, the artist? Oh, yeah, with the afro. Oh, yeah. He's got some incredible stuff on YouTube. And my kids will watch it. They'll hit pause. They'll do exactly what he said. And then they'll you know, play it some more, do it again. And we have some really incredible Bob Ross paintings now in our house because of it. So really just thinking about what are some of the new things that it came about. My daughter had a birthday during this quarantine. I think it's a birthday she'll probably never forget because we did a surprise Zoom call and had about 20, 25 different families on there. We, she had a bunch of friends come over and stand six feet apart on our sidewalk holding signs that said happy birthday. I mean, it was just like there's things that have happened that have been pretty incredible. So we're doing our best to try to focus on that. Now, for those watching or listening, and we've had our bad days, I mean, for sure. I mean, I made a post a few weeks ago, no matter how big your house is, it feels small during a quarantine. So there are times where it is like we, we need our space and things aren't as positive as it sounds like. I have an important follow-up question for you. Uh, and I want you to think about this. When you were telling me about those Bob Ross paintings, do you have any happy little trees in there? Oh, you got to have happy little trees. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, I used to love watching Bob Ross when I was a kid, bro. I love that guy. He was awesome. Cool. Let's, uh, let's move into leadership. And so things are changing. Like you said, you're, you're an executive coach. You're helping leaders be better leaders. So what I want to know is – how has your leadership changed both at work and at home? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, with mine and, and you know, with the team, not that I wasn't honest before at, at all, but, I mean, I think there's a heightened level of, you know, speaking honest and vulnerable with those that you lead. Uh, but then – you know, having the confidence to, to move forward based on the facts that you know and the and decisions to make. So whether it is those that I'm leading or even my kids, it is letting them know, yeah, th th this is tough. This is hard. You know, we're in some uncharted waters. However, you know, that, you know and share that honesty, share that, that vulnerability that it's hard for you, but then to press forward. We can't sit here. You know, we can't just stay here and wait for president to, to lift the sanctions. Or Why not, Corey? Why in. can't we just sit and wait till everything gets back to normal? That's right. Well, we'll be, I mean, you'll be passed over. Whether it's in a company setting, there are companies that are making smart moves of pivoting. Whether how they're selling, how they're going to market, or what they're selling, the way they're packaging their product. So if you sit still, especially during this time, waiting for your governor to lift sanctions or, or the president, people will pass you by. Absolutely, from the business standpoint. There are those that are looking to disrupt and are doing some disruptive things. But even from a family standpoint, if, if we sit back and wait for it to get back to normal, when there is a normalcy, there won't be connection with spouses. There won't be a connection with you and your child because you've been passive during this time. This is a time to step up in your leadership at home for your, your kids to see, man, my mom or my dad, look at, the, look at the faith, look at the determination, the perseverance that they have. I, we all, whether they're employees or they are kids, want to follow confident leaders who know where they're going. Yeah. And so for us to be able to do that at home and at work, that's significant. I dig it, man. I dig it. I'm with you. This is the time to step up. This is definitely, a, and it's a, well, actually, this leads me perfectly into my next question. And so, uh, like you said, good time to step up. Big time for leadership. Big time uh, opportunities here. And so I want to know right now, what opportunities are you loving right now? What is it right now that you just love seeing or that you see coming down the pipe or whatever? One thing I'm really enjoying, it seems about like anybody you call or email to say you want to connect, they're available. I mean, it is unbelievable. Someone will make a comment on a LinkedIn, 
posts that I've done or I see something that they've done I find intriguing and I, I'll just send a note. You want to connect on Zoom for 15 minutes? And I, I may not be batting a thousand, but maybe yeah, 900. But it's just, and the reason why is it's not that, I, well, one, I think people are looking for community, but people are not just sitting in meetings. People have more free time and, and there's just this willingness to kind of talk. And there seems to be, there's a lot of leaders out there that are open-minded open to new ideas, new relationships. And, and so I think that's fun. I think that is really exciting because, you know, if you take a few months ago, people were always busy. Every time I'd make a phone call, it seemed like you got voicemail. And it, it's different now. I think people are what, longing what for that community. This, what is this phone call you speak of? What is this? Yeah, call? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying to bring it back. I trying to bring it. the phone call back. I love it, man. I love it. All right. So opportunities in business. Uh, what about any opportunities at home that you're loving right now? I think now is a great time to, to get, you know, date, dates are, are, are more difficult with your spouse for sure, because you can't go anywhere. My wife and I did a date on Saturday night where we drove together to get food, carry out or, you know, carry out food. And then the idea was going to go to a park and eat there, but it was pouring down rain. So we ended up coming back home. But it, I mean, it was just fun getting away and spending some time together. So that was good. And then with each of my kids, just trying to grab some time to walk to a coffee shop together, me and my son spending time outside playing, but just trying to get more of that one on one time. I think what's going to be interesting is when that we do get back to normal or when businesses are starting to open back up. It'll be interesting to see how short some people's memories are. We may go right back to the busyness, right back to the busy schedules every night, having activities. So my hope is that we don't do that as a family, nor, nor do other people. I've heard many, many clients and friends make comments like, oh, I've eaten more with our family at our family dinner table in the last month than I have in the last five years, you know, or comments like that. And I, you know, my hope and prayer is that the family dinners will remain. The spending time with families will, will remain. And we'll yeah. all be stronger on the other side of this. Uh, you know, that really, that, that's a touching comment because we make it a point to eat dinner together over here. And I, it, it almost makes me feel sad for people who want to get back to normal if this is the new normal, having these family dinners, having the time. And I, I feel like that should be the normal and so that now i've got this uh, the sadness in my heart for anybody that goes back to normal <laughs> yeah yeah oh man cool cool all right so here's the biggie five years from now you're looking back at the 2020 lockdown how do you want to be remembered that's awesome yeah i would like to be remembered as one who was just willing to serve um, his, you know, his clients and his friends and be one that was providing encouragement and positivity. Whether it is the clients I work with now, talking to them 15, 20 minutes longer on a, on a call. You know, before they're pretty darn scheduled because they have to get off the phone at 11 because they have a meeting to go to or I had a meeting to go to. So being there for clients right now. I had a client probably about two weeks ago, it was Call was great. Probably about five minutes left. I asked, anything else? How you doing? And broke down in tears. An executive of about a $30 million company and just the heaviness of having to do payroll reductions for employees and managing the work from home and not work from home. Trying to be that confident leader. And this was a safe place for him to break down. So we ended up talking for another 25 minutes. And it was great and able to talk them back around out of, out of the valley, out of the pit. But I want to be remembered for the person that was there during this tough time, you know, for my family, for clients, and even for those that I may not know, whether it's a post or a video, daily bread, whatever it may be that someone sees is like, that's, that's what I needed. Yeah. I love it, man. So, all right. Now I'll, I'll 
ask you, is there anything else you want to say to the Daily Bread listeners as we're coming up on the end? Yeah, I think determination and perseverance. There is an end to this. There will be a normal we come back through. And I think during this time, the two things that I'm thinking of right now are one, give yourself grace. If this, you're hearing things that I've said or other people have said on a daily bread or reading blogs, you're like, oh, I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have done this during my break. I wish I would have been more intentional during this time. And give yourself grace. It, that, that has happened. Maybe you could have done some things differently or been more intentional with your spouse, or your kids, or employees, or whatever it may be. Give yourself grace. It didn't maybe go as planned or you wish you would have done it better. But now be intentional with this, this time remaining. If, I don't know exactly how all these phases are going to happen, but May 1st, it sounds like there may be a phase of something. There may be one that comes a few months later, whatever it may be. So we're going to start to see the light at the end of this tunnel. And I would just first, you know, what has transpired, give yourself grace, but now let's be intentional with this time that remains. Because this will, this will end. I love the word you use there, intentional. And that, that's a beautiful word and a beautiful thought to leave people on. So, Corey, where can people find you when they're looking for executive coaching or a nice positive word or a sensitive ear? That's right. That's right. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me on here. I appreciate it greatly. Book, Win at Home First. It's on Amazon, Audible, Kindle. It's been a book that's been helpful to other leaders. Actually, Forbes said it was top one of seven. There it is. Look at you. Thank you. Tabbed up down here. Yeah, you did. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And a gentleman from Forbes said it was top one of seven books everyone on your team should read. And so that's been, been pretty neat. My website is CoreyMCarlson.com. All social media is at Carlson Corey. And Win at Home First podcast, thanks to you, is coming out april 29th so oh, excited wow. about that there it is when at home first i'm going to hold my copy up over here you can't see that if you're listening to the podcast but when at home first there's his name Corey m carlson thank you Corey, for bringing the light i appreciate you brother thank you for the encouraging words thank you for lifting our spirits thank you for the daily nourishment and you my dear listeners you're listening to the daily bread project.com we're coming at you daily 10 a.m the daily bread project.com thank you for tuning in and we will be back next time oh and before i forget see i've been terrible at this share the bread with someone share your bread don't be selfish share this with someone who needs it we love you guys and we'll talk to you next